Hey, welcome to the next lesson of our tutorial series on how to create the game Among Us in Unity. For this lesson, we're going to start working on player customization, or more specifically, changing the player's color. Now before we begin, make sure that you've watched the previous videos of this series. There's a link to our playlist in the description below. And please subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos. Now in the game Among Us, a player can only customize their character inside the waiting room before the game starts. And so I've saved a new copy of my scene and I've called it Waiting Room. Now the first thing that we want to do inside this new scene is add a new UI canvas. You can do this by right clicking in the hierarchy, going down to UI and selecting Canvas. I've then renamed my canvas to Customize Menu and the only change that I've made to this object is I've set UI scaling mode to scale with screen size. This is a setting that I just prefer to use in my games and I've changed the match slider to be on height. Now I do have a new script attached to this object but before we create this script let's create the rest of our customized menu. To do this we first need to add a UI panel. This is done by right clicking on our canvas going down to UI and select panel. I've then changed the rec transform of this object to have its anchors be in the center of our canvas, I've then moved this object over to 165 in the X position. I've changed the width to be 400 and the height to be 500. The only other change that I made to this object is that I set the color opacity to be 255. Next, I've added a text object to this panel, which is done by right clicking on our panel, going down to UI and select text. The only change that I made to the rec transform of this object is I moved it up to 215 in the Y position then set the text field to read customize. I've set the font size to be 25 and I centered the alignment. We then need to create another panel which will be a child to our first panel so we can right click on our first panel, go down to UI and select panel. I've renamed this panel to colors. I've set the anchor points to be in the center of our first panel. I've then moved it down to negative 50 in the Y position and I've set the width and height to 300. I've then changed the color of the image to be a dark gray. And the last thing that I've done for this object is added a grid layout group. Then all we have to do is add nine UI buttons as child to this panel. So you'll right click on your colors object, go down to UI and select button. The grid layout group will automatically reposition and size these buttons so that they'll fit within the grid. To create the other buttons, we can just duplicate the first button eight more times. We then want to go through each of the buttons and change the color to be one of the color options available. So I have a red button, a blue button, a yellow button, and so on. So now that we've created the visual elements of our customization menu, let's create the script that I have attached to our canvas. This is a new script that I've called AU underscore character customizer. And let's go ahead and open it up. The first thing that we need to do inside this script is create an array of colors. So I have a serialized field of type colors that I've made into an array and I've called it all colors. Next we need a public function that we can pair to each of our buttons. So I have a public void function called set color. This function has a parameter of type int called color index. But before we add the line of code inside this function, let's hop over to the player controller script because there's some stuff that we need to do first. Now inside this script, we need to add some new variables. And the first variables that I have are for creating a singleton of our current or local player. This will be so that we can simulate multiplayer before we've implemented multiplayer. The first variable is a serialized field of type bool and I've called it has control. And the second variable is our singleton. So this is a public static variable of type AU player controller, and I've called it local player. The next two variables that I have down here are for implementing our color change. The first is a static variable of type color, which I've called my color. And the next is a sprite renderer called my avatar sprite. Once we have these variables, we then need to initialize them. So here in the start function, I have an if statement where we're checking to see if has control equals true. If it does, then we want to set local player equal to this. Then down at the bottom of our start function, I have my avatar sprite equals my avatar dot get component. And we're looking for a sprite renderer after which we want to make sure that our my color variable is initialized because it's static so we won't be able to set it in the inspector so i have if my color equals color.clear we then want to just set it to be white so my color equals color.white after which we can set the color of our player so i have my avatar sprite.color 
equals my color. Now the last thing that we need to do for this script is create a function for changing our player's color. So down here at the bottom I have a public void function called set color which requires a parameter of type color which I've called new color. Inside this function we're setting the my color variable equal to new color. I then have an if statement where we're checking to see if my avatar sprite does not equal null. If it does not equal null then we can update the color of our sprite renderer component. And so I have my avatar avatarsprite.color equals my color. Once you've done all this, we can save this script and go back to our customizer script. Back inside the script, all we have to do is call the setColor function on our singleton player. And so I have au underscore player controller dot local player dot set color, and I'm passing in the color at the color index of our all colors array. Now just for testing purposes, I'm going to add one more function to this script, which will be for loading into a new scene. So we're going to want to include using Unity Engine Manager up at the top. And then this is going to be a public void function called next scene. And I'm going to have an int parameter called scene index. And inside this function, I'm just going to call scene manager dot load scene and pass in scene index. We then want to save this script and we'll go back to Unity. Once we're back inside Unity, we want to select the player object that's in our scene and set our has control variable equal to true. I'm then also going to hop over to our other scene and I'll select this player object and set the has control variable equal to true as well. I'm also going to move this player and our cube to a new position so that we know this scene is different than our waiting room scene. We can then go back to our waiting room scene. Inside our waiting room scene, we want to select our canvas object and apply our character customizer script to this game object. We then want to set the all colors array to the size of 9, after which you can use the eyedropper tool to select the same colors that we've set for each of our buttons. And when you set a color in this array, you'll also want to make sure that the alpha channel is up at 255. Next you'll want to select all of your button objects and add an on-click event. Then select your canvas game object and drag it into this field here. After which you can use the drop down menu to go down to AU character customizer and select set color. You'll then need to go through each button and increment the static int parameter for these functions. So the first button should be zero, the next button should be one, two, three, and so on. These values are the index by which we access our all colors array. Now that handles the setup and programming for our color change menu. And if we were using the old input system, this would be ready and working. But since we're using the new input system, there's one more thing that we need to do. And that is with our event system game object. Now the event system game object is automatically created and added to your scene when you first create your canvas game object. But you'll notice that the standalone input module component is throwing an error. And this error simply says that we're using the new input system and this component is now obsolete. But below this error, we now have a button that says replace with input system UI input module. And so I'm going to click this button and now you can see that our component has changed. Now there's one more thing that we want to do before we can test our project and that is we want to add a button for loading into the next scene. So I'm going to right click on our canvas object and just select UI button. I can then reposition it so it's out of the way. We then want to scroll down to the button component, add an on click event, drag our canvas game object in here, use the drop down menu to select AU character customizer and next level. We'll then set the parameter to be 1. I'll then also select the text object and just change it to read next level. And finally, we need to open up our build settings and add the waiting room scene so that it's index zero and our sample scene will be index one. And now I can test out my project. So here we have our astronaut and our menu with the different colored buttons. And when I click on a color, you can see that our astronaut changes to that color. Now because our color is being saved into a static variable, when I load into the next scene, our player object should be changed to that exact same color. And there we have it. Now one more thing that you might want to do is create a prefab out of this canvas game object. Now make sure that you stay tuned for the next lesson because we're going to start working on the kill mechanic 
which should be a lot of fun. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos.